So one of the important things that you're going to learn about cells is their ability to interact with their external environment. So all cells, according to our cell theory, has some type of border that separates them from the external environment. And we know that border is called the cell membrane, or you may also hear it called the plasma membrane. In order for a cell to survive, it has to be able to exchange with the environment, whether it is gathering nutrients from the environment, water, or whether it is getting rid of waste and putting them into the environment. What we like to do now in this part of the experiment is show you how those membranes are what we call selectively permeable. And as the name implies, it simply means that it selects for certain things to go past it, but will block other things. And so to simulate this, we're going to use a membrane called dialysis tubing. So the name dialysis, you guys have heard before. So you think about kidney dialysis and what do we do for that? Well, in that particular case, what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the selectivity of the membrane. So when you get hooked up to a dialysis machine, it is designed to remove the waste from your blood but allow your blood to maintain the important proteins that's circulating within it. So it's selectively permeable. So we're gonna use that to help us mimic what a cell membrane will do. So as I'm explaining the protocol, it is a good idea for you to follow along with the manual so you understand how we were able to get the results that we got. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the actual dialysis tubing. And you will see that what I've done is I've taken this tubing and I've tied one end of the tubing. We're going to do this because we're eventually going to fill the tubing up with starch. And so we want to make sure that the starch does not leak out. And so we open the tubing. And once we open the tubing, we're going to fill it with corn starch. Remember in the previous lab, we know that we can test for the presence of starch using this thing called Lugo solution. And we're going to take advantage of that. Okay? Once we fill the tubing, you have tubing that looks like this. Okay? And you can see the clear cornstarch that is now filled in the tubing. So we know that we added starch to the interior of the dialysis tubing. I want you to remember that because that's going to be important when we start analyzing the results a little bit later. So the next step is, just as we saw in the chemistry of life, we need some Lugols in order to identify the presence of the starch. So in a beaker, we're going to add drops of Lugols until we get into a nice golden brown color. Okay? And after we do that, we're going to take our dialysis tubing, and then we're going to drop it into the Lugols. What are we looking for? We're trying to see what molecules the membrane is selecting for. So in your lab manual, you should be able to identify that we are looking at three different molecules, okay? Because we have water in the dialysis tubing, we have cornstarch in the dialysis tubing, and we have iodine that's in the beaker. So we want to figure out what's going on with those molecules who's going in, who's going out, who's being selected for, who's being selected against. All right, so now we, after about 15 minutes of the dialysis tube in the iodine solution, we now see our results. Notice that we get a color change that is, has occurred inside the dialysis tubing. When we talk about starch and iodine, and the reason why we chose those two different substances is because when they interact with each other, they give us a color change. We call this a colometric assay. So remember at the beginning that when we added starch to our dialysis tubing, we had a nice, clear, translucent color. Now we see that we have a dark purple, almost black color that's associated with it. This tells us that something happened in the dialysis tubing. And what I want you guys to do is take a few minutes to look through your lab manual to determine why did we get that color change and what implication does it have to do with the movement of those molecules in the dialysis tubing. Also take a look at the beaker. 
Did we get any type of color change in the beaker? If we did, why? If not, what happens? So take some time. Using your lab manual, you have all the resources you need in order for you to be able to determine how can I explain the results of this experimentation.